Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. I need you to slip your hands and just wave it to God this morning. Say, here I am, Lord. I have come to give you praise. I have come to say thank you, Jesus, for your goodness in my life. Hallelujah.
Lift your hands up. Lift your voices to the God of all the earth. The one who was, who is, and who is to come. The King of all creation. The Bible declares that without him was not anything made that was made. He's the source and the keeper of our lives. He's the glory and the lifter up of our heads. This morning, raise your hands and let's worship him. We declare that there is no God like you. In all the earth, there is none like unto you. We've searched all over. We've tried everything, but none can compare with you. There is none as holy as you are. There is none like you who is worthy of our praise. You are deliverer. You are provider. You are sustainer. You are healer. You are everything to us. You are God all by yourself. You are Jehovah El Shaddai. The God who does not need another to exist. The self-sufficient God. The all-sufficient God. The multi-breasted one. The one who does everything by himself and for his own pleasure. This morning we raise our voices. We lift up our worship and we declare that you alone are worthy of praise. There is none comparable to you. Every other gods are the works of the hands of men. They are the product of man's imagination. But you are the creator of the ends of the earth. And everything bows in honor of your name. This morning we declare that you are lifted up. We raise you high with our worship. We declare nothing and no one will take our worship. We lift it up to you. We give it up all to you. Hallowed be your name. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Come on, somebody who's excited to be in the presence of this God. Okay, maybe you have some other gods or you have some other things that you depend on. Maybe you have any other thing or something else that you can run to in the time of trouble. But there is, if there is anyone seated or standing here this morning who understands that if God does not keep you, you will not be kept. If he does not save you, you will not be saved. If he has not preserved you, you won't be standing here this morning. If that God is your God, lift your voice and give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. You're welcome to the first Sunday of the second quarter of the year. And our God has been mighty, mighty good to us. He's been back-to-back -back testimony. Why don't you give him praise one more time for everything that he has done, for what he's doing and what he will yet do. Hallelujah. This morning we're going to take our declaration, Limitless Grace. And I need you to raise your hand and let's declare together. In the presence of God. With the understanding that to speak in his ears so he would do to us. I stand to declare that nothing is difficult for me. I have the knowledge of witty inventions. I am a solution provider to humankind. I have the mind of Christ. I am the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth. The greater one lives in me. The grace of God at work in my life is limitless. My glory cannot be hid. The brightness of my rising cannot be denied. My path shines brighter to a perfect day. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I enter into my season of double blessedness. I receive the mighty harvest of God's goodness. I am promoted. I am lifted. I am elevated. I am favored. I grow in spirit, wisdom, and grace. 
And this is my declaration. In Jesus' name. Somebody who is growing in wisdom, in spirit and grace. Give your God the loudest praise you can muster. Hallelujah. You may be seated in God's beautiful presence. And for the fortunes of our service, please pay attention to the multimedia screen for Heritage News. This is Heritage News. Happy Thanksgiving service and welcome to Heritage News. I am Kala Dakuru Basabo. And I am Iene Umana. Let's begin with the headlines. The much anticipated Jesus Festival 2024 takes place tonight. Army of David Prostrate Cancer Screening holds this Saturday. A successful retreat at the RFF boot camp. Plus, protocol department in need of new members. Before we bring you the details of the news, let's join Jennifer as she brings us God Did It. It could only be God. For me and my family, really, God did it. It just seems like I didn't go through all I went through. God did it for me, and I'm sure He can do it for you. Hello, and welcome to this Thanksgiving edition of God Did It. My name is Jennifer Ankemenaya. It's April 2024, and we have survived the hike in four prizes. Power grids that rise and fall and watch the carton of noodles rise to almost 20,000 naira. But we also know that the ability to complain is a privilege of the living, and so we have returned to give glory to a God who promises that those who have made the Lord their hope will be like trees planted along a riverside whose leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruits. Our first Thanksgiver, Mrs. Joseph, has come to appreciate God for relocating her family from Port Harcourt to Abuja in grand style by granting them access to a free, luxurious apartment which they enjoyed for six months before they rented theirs. This period of grace enabled them to settle peacefully into the new environment and regain their footing after the God-ordained move. In addition, Mrs. Joseph testifies that God miraculously healed her of chronic ulcer and palpitation, which had plagued her for a very long time. She says, I just want to thank God for giving us a spiritual mentor like Pastor Larry Olusheye, who listens to God and carried out his instructions by declaring 2023 the year of the new, because that's when new things started happening for me. I also have back-to-back -back testimonies from 2024 that I am yet to share. These have taught me to believe in God in order to enjoy his tremendous blessings and daily benefits. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus yeah. you have done it again. Jesus, yeah. Now I am super excited to share this testimony straight from the Pray Until Something Happens push exercise. Davis Gospel, a pencil artist and singer, was committed to the push exercise and experienced God's blessings immensely throughout the period with back-to-back -back favor. He saw men come to his light and kings to the brightness of his rising as he had an abundance of jobs every day of the fast. So many jobs, in fact, that he started to worry that he would not meet his delivery deadlines. Davis says, God didn't let one day go by without me having a job to draw. An artist in the house will understand that jobs don't come daily. But for these 21 days, I chested jobs with my full chest to stop playing. In addition, he received supernatural speed and strength to finish the jobs on time. Dave is certain that God came through for him and promises to return the glory to him alone. Thank you, Jesus, he says. Your son is forever grateful. Jesus, yeah. I think that this is a sign for Davis to continue with his push fast. Who knows what greater jobs lie in store? And our final thanksgivers are none other than the indefatigable team of the Heritage Works Department who have returned to thank God for the successful ministration and performance of their Who Wants to Be a Zionaire stage play. They are grateful for protection, provision, and the creative capacity and ability to minister in this department. Remember, you can all be Zionists. Jesus, yeah. you have done it again. Jesus, yeah. And
And that's all we can take on this edition of God Did It. Be like Davies and sending your push and other testimonies to God Did It at hotrportacot.com. That is God Did It at hotrportacot.com. Or you can send us a message on WhatsApp at 706 405 That is 706 405 I am Zionia Unstoppable Jenny. And until I come your way again, do stay rapturable. Heritage News will be right back. Welcome back. Now the news in detail. The Rock Foundation Force of the Heritage House, RFF, concluded its annual boot camp which held last weekend from the 29th to the 31st of March 2024 with the team Excellence, Power to Make a Difference. The camp held at the Adonai Center, Oasis of Love, Orphanage Home, Iwebe, here in Beaver State. It was a spirit-filled bonding experience for all attendees as they held push and vigil prayers. The experience also did not neglect the physical and mental growth of the attendees as they partook in a roadwalk exercise, aerobics, painting sip sessions, and several sporting competitions were conducted amongst the department members and their invitees. Different resource persons were on ground to deliver lectures on ethics and discipline, becoming the best version of yourself, business startups, security strategies, and health awareness, among others. 2025 edition promises to be bigger and better. In the book of Psalms, chapter 84, verse 10, we are reminded that even the humblest service in the house of the Lord is greater than any other honor elsewhere. The protocol department extends invitations for new workers. If you're interested to serve full-time, protocol team welcomes you with open arms. But if you choose to serve for a shorter duration, we have a special opportunity available for volunteers to assist this evening with our concert, Jesus Festival. Areas include helping with the setup, ushering, and providing logistical support. Your participation will help make these events truly memorable. You can get more details at the foyer as you exit the sanctuary. The Army of David Partners, as part of a health support program for church members, hereby announces a forthcoming prostrate screening for men about 50 years old. Army of David, in conjunction with consultants from University of Port Harcourt Teaching Hospital, invites interested members for the screening, which will hold this Saturday, the 13th of April, 2024. Please note that although the screening is free for church members, the exercise is available only to 50 eligible men who pre-registered on first-come, first-service basis. Entry closes on or before this Thursday, the 11th of April, 2024. Eligible members can register online by scanning the QR code on the screen, or you can also register at Army of David stand beside the First Lady's media store. Men aged 50 years and above are encouraged to take advantage of the important screening. It's a few hours to the first of its kind praise concert themed Jesus Festival, which will take place right here in our sanctuary this evening at 4 p.m. Ministry will be our very own Potter's Treasure, Great Man Takit, Dare Justified, Precious Mark, Prince Emmanuel, Priye Odede, Neon Adejo, Mike Abdul, Promise Efyong, Shegun Aniye, and our very own convener, Reverend Lanre Olushaye. This electrifying event promises to be an unforgettable experience of worship, praise, and spiritual enlightenment. Hold up and swallow it up! 
Jesus Festival 2024. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done. That will be all on Heritage News today, but before we go, the Heritage Academy classes will not be holding today due to Jesus Festival 2024. Classes had to resume 2.30 p.m. next Sunday, the 14th of April 2024, at the Administrative Building. From the desk of Heritage News, I am Kala Dakurubasubo. And I am Iyana Umana. Do enjoy the rest of the service. Hallelujah. Is someone excited to be alive today? Is someone excited that today is um, Thanksgiving Sunday? Just celebrate. Just celebrate. Just celebrate. In spite of all our challenges, we're standing here today. Just celebrate and just thank him. Hallelujah. Oh, it's an exciting time to be alive and also exciting times for our God to show his miraculous hands in our life. Hallelujah. If this, if last month was your birthday, um, wedding anniversary, or any, any, any other anniversary you want to celebrate, this is the time we want to rejoice with you and say a prayer over you. So please, if you fall into that uh, category, just um, stand to your feet and just dance out here. Choir, give us a song as they come. I will sing my praise unto you, my Lord. I will shout, I will dance to you. You have been my help forever and ever. In the morning, in the morning when I wake up, I will sing my praise unto you, my Thank you in your own words. Just connect with him for whatever you came out here for. Just say, Lord, thank you. Just thank you. It's his invisible hand that kept you alive. It's by his mercy you are still married. In spite of the enemy, we're still standing. Just celebrate. Those of us celebrating life and those of us celebrating our anniversaries, we thank you. We thank you. We know that it is you. We know that it is you. We celebrate. We thank you. Thank you. Let him hear you this morning. Connect with him this morning. And just tell him thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Father, I pray for your people i pray for your children this morning i'm asking that those that celebrated their birthdays let them continue to celebrate life let them continue to celebrate your hand in their lives in the name of jesus you've made them see this new age you will continue with them even to a ripe old age in the name of jesus mighty god i pray that this ones will not know sickness in the name of jesus there will be no downtime nothing nothing because they belong to you and heavenly father i pray that they will not just live but they will live a healthy life a fulfilled life a prosperous life in the name of jesus they will have cause to say thank you for creating me and thank you for giving me the opportunity um, to live in such a time as this lord i pray for these couples that are here standing and Father, as they're standing here today, there shall be no, there shall be no separation. We say no to separation. We say no to divorce. Their marriages shall continue to be outstanding 
as they stand before you in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, everything that comes to fight homes, they will not, they will not come near this once in the name of Jesus. Let your chariots of fire be round this one. Father, you said concerning Job, you said that there was an hedge that was built around him. Built a hedge around this, this couples in the name of Jesus. Let your chariots of fire be around them and that we shall not hear any bad news concerning this ones. And I pray that even as wine gets better with age, the love they have for each other will get better with age in the name of Jesus. Thank you for grace and wisdom for understanding and to, to solve conflict and to resolve conflict. Give them the grace to forgive. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. If you believe that prayer, put your hands together, celebrate God. Hallelujah. Choir, give us a song as it comes back to this. Everything that don't be done before. Everything that don't be done before. The black seeds don't be done before. The black sun don't be done before. special thanksgiving this morning i would like to call um, up here mrs tolu daramola and family um she is thanking the lord for her 50th birthday and also she's thanking the lord for protection and preservation and god's provision of their of their home choir give us a song as they come please had it been i know i would not begin the praise in the praise, even before he answered, I for ask for nothing, just give me wash. Now that I know, I join the overflow. I did be I Congratulations on your 50th. Welcome to the fifth floor. Welcome to the fifth floor. It's a floor of grace. It's a floor of grace. And I pray that the Lord will, will grant you grace. Um, and I pray that I pray that right now you have done some things by, by your own power. But let the Holy Spirit carry you from now on in the name of Jesus. No more struggling, no more, no more pain, that you are entering into a new level, the level of grace, the level of favor in the, next, in the name of Jesus. Let the next 50 be memorable. Let the next 50 be awesome. You will see, you will see your children's children. You will eat with them. You shall continue to be the apple of your husband's eye. And I pray and I ask that, Lord, whatever you people have asked as a couple, it shall continue to, you will see it in the name of Jesus. You will see the fruit of your labor. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for protecting and preserving them. And I ask that let the angels that are, are, are assigned to them continue to be active and continue to be vigilant over them. Thank you, Father, for this celebration. They've come out, and they will always come out to be celebrated in, all, in their lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Church, can we celebrate this wonderful family and this um, wonderful choir? Give us a song. Guys.
time for baby dedication. Uh, amen. The Lord is always adding to us in this church. And we have six babies we are de dedicating today. Please, as I call these babies, let's celebrate the families. The families um, will come up here. Their friends and their well-wishers shall come. We will stand in front of the altar. Mr. and Mrs. Liu Wonosiko. Mr. and Mrs. Chibuzo Obonna. Mr. and Mrs. Ubong Fred. Mr. and Mrs. Darlington Ukonu. Mr. and Mrs. Victor Chinedu Egesi. Mr. and Mrs. Divine Uwochiri Obiachumwa. Obiachumwa. Fire, give us a song as they come, please. <laughs> Let us just take one minute to say, Lord, thank you. Just take one minute to say, Lord, we appreciate you. We see this miracle, and we know it's from you. We did not get it from anywhere else. We called upon you, and you gave them this. They called upon you, and they, and they received us. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you because you are the one that made sure that these babies, nothing happened in the labor room. In the theater, nothing happened, and they are here today. Um, mother and child, they are here today. We celebrate you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this that you have done in Jesus' mighty name. Church, can we just celebrate God? Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. It's time for us to hear the names of the babies and the meaning. Karen Apoch. That was the third daughter of Job in the Bible. And then the tribal name is Gnati. What's the meaning? Gnati? The meaning, the first one. The first one. Uh, the, 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 the Job's daughter. One of yeah. beauty. I'm <laughs> <laughs> just joking. <laughs> anyway. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. And quiet. the second name is uh, Gnati. Okay. That's Pachama or Wate dialect. What is Meaning it? wealth. She's a wealth to the family. So shall it be in her life in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Okay, her name is uh, Elora, means uh, God is my light. Then her travel name is Chidima, God is good. So shall it be in her life in the name of Jesus. Her name is Kima Abasi, in God's love. Zendaya, giving thanks. Fred. So shall it be in her life, right? In her life in the name of Jesus. Okay, uh, his name is um, Jesse Kamsi Yochuku Okono. Jesse is, means the Lord exists, that is God gifts. Why Kamsi Yochuku is um, my heart desire, how I ask God. So shall it be in his life in the name of Jesus. Good morning, George. The name of our son is Eze Ogundo Itan. Eze is a priest and a king. Ogundu is staff of life, and Ethan is strong, firm, resilient, and wise. So shall it be in his life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Church, now we are going to do something prophetic. I want you to stretch forth your hands on this to these children and begin to bless them. Everything we say today will stick in their lives. 
and there shall be no alteration in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We receive them with joy, even as we begin to bless them in your name. Father, first of all, we want to remove them from the foundation of their father's houses and their mother's houses and will bring them into this new foundation, the rock of ages, this foundation ratified with the blood of Jesus. We bring them in now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we ask, we pray, and we ask that now in a new foundation, only that which God has said concerning them will happen in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, anyone that chases these children from anywhere to this foundation, let them be broken in pieces in Jesus' mighty name. I bless these children this morning. And they will remain blessed. As a church, we bless you and we release you. And we say that no sickness that, that affects infants, it will not come near you in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that these ones will be outstanding. These ones will be, these ones will be from a very early age, uh, they will become known. At a very early age, you will become visible that the hand of the Lord will be upon them. Father, let your hand never depart from them in the name of Jesus. Today, we place, I place a seal a seal of, of Christ on them. Nobody will trouble them in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for, for the gift and the grace of greatness upon their lives. When they start school, Heavenly Father, they shall be ten times better than their peers. We release them, release them into life and we say, go into life and be great. In the name of Jesus, be in leadership, be in the corridors of power, be in power in the name of Jesus. We release this mandate upon you and is unchangeable and it cannot be altered because we do it, we do it, we declare it today in Jesus' mighty name. To this end, I dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I dedicate you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Church, let us put our hands together. Let the fathers come forward with their children. We hand over these children to you alive. You will not bury them. Everything that you need to bring them up, the Lord shall give to you. Your head will not lack oil. You will have the wisdom to chain them up in the name of Jesus. Anyhow you want to shoot this, no matter the distance you want to shoot these arrows, these children, you will not miss the mark. Whatever is in your heart to do for them, we join faith with you and you say it's already done in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Please hand over the children back to their mothers. We hand over these children back to you. You will not bury them. Um, the Lord shall give you wisdom to chain them up um, in his way, and they will not depart from it in the name of Jesus. You are not permitted to cry any tears of sorrow concerning these children, only tears of joy. You will cry concerning these ones. And these children will be a constant source of joy and delight to you. They will show you things that you have never known. They will take you places you have never known. In the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Church, if we believe that, please, one more time, let's put our hands together for them. And choir, give us a song as they dance back to their seat. For the first time in the Heritage House, we have a mistral and a familiar voice from the Niger Spirit Competition. Heritage House, let us receive now Minister Promise Effio. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
tell your neighbor the Lord is good. Tell somebody the Lord is good. You know, this, this is actually my first time here. And actually my second time in Pathakot. Thank you so much, sir. Pastor Lonry. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, H-O-T-R-P-H. Thank you. I'm deeply grateful to be here. And I'm happy to be doing this with you all. You know, someone said something. That when you want to worship God, that worship to God is looking God at the face and telling him how good he is. And that's what we're about to do this morning. So I don't know if you're ready. I don't know if God has been great to you. I don't know if God has been faithful to you. Please, can you give God a loud shout and a clap of it? Cause you are the way, truth and the life Jesus You will never leave me nor forsake me Except you build a house The builders build in vain I go follow you to go. Anywhere you lead me, I will go. Father, I like it all. I like the way you did lead me all. Except you build a house. Those who build it, build in vain. You are the correct architecture. You design it beautifully. Father, we love you. Father, we love you. Hey, they did them, men did them, boy, come do. Set a lot of up and don't say none again, boy. Come to Caro, even our city. Hey, say, I carry God in some more. For the Bastio, Eva was in the Bassi, who bought the Bombia Cassio, Eva was in the Bassi, your bomb in the From Mutia to Seven Sai Boy, come down. I am a woe. I am a woe. I am. Oh, 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 oh,
Oh Jehovah, I mean you. Be ready, Usum, no Jesus. Jesus said, Eddie, yeah, 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 For you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like it. There is no one else like you. Father, you are great. You do miracles so, so. There is no. No one else like you. Nobody like Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Lift your voice. Say you are great. You are great. You don't fear a cause of prayer. I am certain of promise. There is no one else like you. There is nobody like Jesus.
Hallelujah. One more time, put those things together for God and celebrate this incredible gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may please take your seats. Luke chapter 6 from verse 37 tells us about attitudes that we should have, that the earth has no other choice than to reciprocate. It tells us, judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will also be forgiven. Then furthermore, in 38, he goes ahead to say, give and it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over do men give into your bosom. So this morning we have come to give knowing fully well that when we give, the earth, the cosmos has no other, they have, there's no other thing they can do than to reciprocate because that is the law of God. So this morning, please package your tithes and your offerings. There are envelopes in the seat pockets in front of you. And as you give, know that God is not unrighteous. And indeed, it comes back to you. Let us pray. So Heavenly Father, thank you for the seed that is in our hands. We've come knowing that you are faithful, that you are righteous, and that you are able. And that there is nothing that is committed to your hands that will go waste. And so, Father... We ask that the seed that we sow this morning, that you receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. As is our transition, so please, those of you that are sitting along the aisles, both on this side and down the hall, please stand and let the rest of the church pass your offerings to those that are standing along the aisles. If you see the people standing in front of you, please stand. The ushers will quickly walk through the aisles to take our offerings. If your offerings have been taken, please, you may take your seats. And receive with me very warmly this morning. Potter's treasure. Hallelujah. 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 So many times, it's like we Christians are more powerful during Easter because everybody's heavy on declaration. By his stripes have been made whole. Um, it is finished, so no more pains, no more shame, and no more all of that. Yeah, because he leaves, I can face tomorrow. And then it looks like by Tuesday after Easter Monday, like the devil is back from his holidays. And all the declarations we've been making, we keep them on hold till the next Easter. We go back to living in fear. And everything we begin to, to declare is opposite what we've declared in the past few days. But Potter's treasure is here this morning to remind you you're a new creature. You have been forgiven. You are changed. The blood still speaks for you, not only during Easter period. It speaks every single day of your life. So the next time the devil comes to remind you or to change your confession, shout it loud in his ear and say, I am changed. I've been forgiven. Receive warmly again, Father's treasure, as we minister. Change. Feels like I've been down to the river. You washed away all my shame. Thank you. 
save And you changed my destiny With your surprise you paid Now I can say All things are passed away All things are new Not the same Yes, I've been changed
wherever you are, if you know that he changed you and you'll never be the same, why don't you lift your hands all over this place and let us magnify this great God that we serve. Never you forget that when we gather, we have not come to worship at the shrine of a man's gift. We have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. We have come to an innumerable company of angels, to the spirits of just men made perfect. This is Mount Zion. So let all your focus be on him this morning. The one who sits upon the circles of the earth. Father, it is to you that we have come. We bring our tribute of praise. We pay obeisance to your majesty. We declare that you alone are God. And there is no God like you. So Father, we stand in alignment with that that is your predetermined counsel. Saying, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come. Glorify yourself in this room this morning. Father, I pray that you will heal a sick body. You will give someone a breakthrough. You will give another a miracle. To the intent that not one person will leave this room the same way they came. Let transformation become commonplace by the reason of the fact that we came into your presence. This is our petition, our Father. In Jesus' matchless name, and everybody says a big amen. amen. I know that your amen can be louder than that. If you love Jesus like I suspect that you do, why don't you lift your hands higher than your shoulders, throw back your head, open wide your mouth, and give your God the loudest shout of praise that you can muster. That does not sound like the Heritage House, House on the Rock. I don't know what church that is. This is but I know that the Heritage House, they know how to give God a real praise. You see, oftentimes I tell people that because we are properly brought up and we are very cautious, if I step on your toe, I will apologize. If I bump into you, I will apologize. Uh, if I'm trying to back out of the parking lot and I kind of scratch your car, I will apologize. And if you want me to fix it, I'll fix it. Um, <laughs> but one thing I refuse to apologize for, I will never apologize for my praise. Because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. If there's anybody in this room this Lord's day who knows that if it had not been the Lord who was on your side, you would have been swallowed up. Take your time right now and give your God the loudest shout of praise that you can muster. good to us. So help me turn to the person to your right, give them a high five and tell them God has been good to me and I know it. Oh, turn to your other neighbor, slap them another high five, tell them God has been good to me and I know it. I'm not going to sit here, stand here and act like God has not done anything for me. Hallelujah, you may please be seated. You may please be seated in God's beautiful presence. I'm sure many of you are wondering what in the world is pastor up to what next is he going to come up with why is church upside down it's just what it is all right glory to god we're getting ready for jesus festival tonight and it is going to be oh i thought you were going to be more excited than that it is going to be a real jesus party but make no mistake about it. It is not for personal aggrandizement. It is not to show off skills. It is all about 
Jesus tonight. In fact, I want to say this to you. If you don't like hearing the name Jesus, don't come. Because we will shout it from the rooftops, we will swing on the chandeliers, we will jump, we will shout, we will lie prostrate, we will cry, uh, and you, you can have, you can have carted moving from one nose to the other. Please excuse us because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, please excuse me if I get a little undignified. It's because you don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. So tonight is only for Jesus crazy people. People who are totally and absolutely crazy. People of no reputation. Who have no, who are not going to be concerned about the starch on their shirt or the gaiter on their outfit. Who don't care about bowstrade wigs or eyelash extension. Who know that if the eyelash extension get in the way, we will remove it and keep it somewhere. Because nothing gets in the way of praising Jesus tonight. If you are the one that I'm kind of talking about, put those hands together. Yes. If, if you're watching online, if you can make it into the room, make it into the room. There will be no sitting space. So if you can make it into the room, make it into the room. It's going to be intense. Hallelujah. And weren't you blessed by the ministry of Promise Ephraim? Oh, you can do better than that, Heritage House. Phenomenal man of God. Mm. You will get to see him again tonight as he ministers. Hallelujah. To those fathers, especially, who dedicated their children this morning, um, I like saying this, and if you've been in this church, I've said it severally, that the Bible likens children to arrows in the hand of a warrior. A few things you must know about arrows. Arrows do not determine their target. That is a function of the warrior. Arrows do not determine their trajectory. That is a function of the warrior. So, especially as fathers, understand that you are warriors, and it is your responsibility to shoot those arrows in the right direction. My prayer for you is very simple. When you shoot those arrows, your hand will be steady. Your feet will be firm so that your arrows will never miss the mark. And God will bless you. They brought you joy. They will never become sources of sorrow in your life in the name of Jesus. Church, please put your hand together for all the babies who dedicated this Sunday morning. Dignified, you don't know why I know what he has done for John 20 24 to 28. John, the 20th chapter. All right, TPT, please. Are you there? John chapter 20, verse 24 to 28. If you are there, can I get an amen? amen? All right. Please, whilst you are seated, I'm going to read in your hearing. All right. Please follow me with your heart. And if you have the Bible, can you do a quick pew check? Can you look to your left and to your right and find out if the person sitting beside you came to church with the Bible? Do a quick pew check. Just, 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 just look around you. Look at them here. And if they are not with a Bible, a tablet, a phone, and if they are holding a phone, ensure that it is open to the Bible app. Do a quick pew check. If there's anybody like that around you, just look at them. Don't say nothing to them. Just look at them. You know that look that says like, seriously? Really? It's just a Sunday after Easter and you didn't come to church with a Bible. All right. 
So I will quickly read in your hearing and then we will look at the word of God. My friends, here begins the reading of God's holy and infallible word. One of the twelve wasn't present when Jesus appeared to them. It was Thomas whose nickname was the Twin. So the disciples informed him, We have seen the Lord with our own eyes, still unconvinced. Thomas replied, There's no way I'm going to believe this unless personally, I personally see the wounds of the nails in his hands. Touch them with my finger and put my hand into the wound of his side where he was pierced. Then eight days later, Thomas and all the others were in the house together, and even though all the doors were locked, Jesus suddenly stood before them. Peace to you, he said. Then looking into Thomas's eyes, he said, Put your finger here in the wounds of my hands. Here, put your hand into my wounded side and see for yourself, Thomas. Don't give in to your doubt any longer. Just believe. Then the words spilled out of his heart. You are my Lord and you are my God. The Lord bless the reading of his word. Bow your heads with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Undoubtedly, unto you the gathering of your people will be. We ask that you speak, even in the brevity of the time that we have. I'm asking that these words be impactful, that it causes transformation, even in the lives of your people. Take my tongue and my thinking faculties and use them as a tool to inscribe your word in the hearts of your people. Our heart is ready to receive the incorruptible seed of the word. Father, cause the word, the seed of the word, to grow, to thrive, to flourish in our heart, bringing forth fruit that all men may see. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' matchless name, and everybody says, Amen. Help me turn to your neighbor and say to that neighbor, there is a recovery mandate over your life. Uh, that's what I want to use for a subject title this morning. Last week, we started a series of a thought process. And I told you, um, on days like last week's Sunday, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And one of the things that we were able to talk about was the fact that Jesus was a real person. Right? Jesus was a real person. He lived a real life. He died um, he's not a figment of someone's imagination. He is not um, just a, um, what will I call it now? He's not a legendary figure, as it were. He's not some, some mythical hero that was cooked up um, in the annals of history, that he really lived. Um, how do we know he lived? The disciples said, uh, the Pharisees, are his brother's not with us. Is he not the son of Mary? Is he not this? So it was someone that people knew. And if it was true that, like some people will say that he didn't really live, um, that would be hard to sell. Uh, the reason for that is because by the time Peter and Paul and all the other apostles started writing about him, his mates were still alive. Remember, Jesus died early. He died at 33. So people that he grew up with were still alive. If he was not a real person, they would have spoken. Many of the books that you were reading, Peter's um, account, were reading maybe... 10 to 30 years after Jesus, and many of them that grew up with him were still, people still knew the streets his father's shop was on. Are, are you still here? Um, so there should be no doubt that he was a real person who lived, and he died. How do we know that he died? Because there is a gentleman by the name of Joseph of Arimathea, um, whose tomb was borrowed. If it was not true, the truth is that The people that were tied to Joseph of Arimathea would have said, these things that you people are saying are not so. So Jesus lived and he died. And then he rose. And we know the story that money was paid to the soldiers to say um, that his body was stolen. Are, are, are you still here? But we also know that he rose because there were many witnesses that he showed himself to after his resurrection. One of the things I want to underscore this morning is the fact that there are a few things the resurrection teaches us. And one of the things that the resurrection teaches us is the resurrection is a show of the power of God to orchestrate a recovery from whatever it is that you are dealing with. 
If he can raise him from the dead, you can make a comeback. Oh, help me tell that to your neighbor who really needs to hear it. That if God can raise Jesus from the dead, then you can make a recovery from whatever. You can, you can recover from anything. Oh, tell them, tell them, be their preacher this Lord's Day. Tell them you can recover from anything. You can lose money, you can recover. You can lose a relationship, you can recover. You can get fired, you can recover. You can lose a business, you can recover. And someone asks, wh wh why are you so sure that I will make that kind of recovery? Have you not read in your Bible? If the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell in my mortal body, then the same spirit will quicken me. If it can quicken me, it can quicken my business. If it can quicken me, it can quicken my family. If it can quicken me, it can quicken the, the career. It can quicken... What? You can make... See, anybody that gives up on you, they give up too early. Anybody that looks at you right now and concludes on your matter, ooh, they don't know the God that you serve. Myself and God, a deadly combination. We can recover from anything. Like I said last week, take the car if you want to take the car, I'll buy another one. The devil is a liar. Take the house if you want to take the house, I'll build another one. Take the business, I'll build another one. Take me from here, transplant me anywhere else on this globe, and whatever you see me do here, I will redo there. You know why? Because, because the thing that I carry is not necessarily location sensitive. It is not in a place. It is in me, and Christ in me is still the hope of God. Do you hear? me what I am saying as long as I've got the Holy Ghost oh it was Apostle Lira in the song that song said Holy Ghost you and I is going to change the world I don't know who you are what part of this room you are sitting in but I simply want to I want to draw me deep down in your soul to let you know that no matter the setback that life hands you you can make a comeback if Jesus can come back from the dead you can make a comeback and you know the kind of comeback I'm talking about a permanent comeback the kind of comeback that only Jesus made do you hear me what I am saying in the house of God because every other person who rose from the dead died again oh Lazarus we celebrated his, his resurrection but he died again the only person who resurrected and did not die again was Jesus in other words get ready for a permanent comeback Oh yes, oh yes, they thought they saw the last of you. But little did they know it was just a setup for a permanent comeback. Uh, this time your life will take on a different kind of trajectory. Forward forever, backward never. Because uh, the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead, uh, he dwells in my body. I can recover from anything. If the power of God can get Jesus out of the tomb, you can recover from anything. Hear me, child of God. Life can have you in a tomb on Friday. But please, uh, Sunday morning is around the corner. Uh, this word is for somebody who feels like they're in a tomb right now. In that dark, dank, dreary place uh, where everybody is looking at you and saying, hey, yeah, hey, yeah, and we thought it was good. Hey, yeah, now, wow. How can this, be? oh, where do bad things happen to good people? Oh, ju just tell them, it's still Friday. It's still Friday. It's still Friday. Friday. It's still Friday. It's still Friday. They are looking at your marriage because you and your husband, you are not on talking terms right now. And people are already saying, oh, and that marriage was such a good one. No, how come it has just fallen? Just, it's still Friday. It's still Friday. It's still Friday. It's still Friday. They are looking at your career and saying, oh, and he, he, he had such a good trajectory. We thought he was going to make it, make it all the way to MD, MD ship or CEO ship or get into the sea suit. But somehow, oh, how come his name is now on the retrenchment? Just, it's still Friday. It's still Friday. It's still Friday. Have me turn to your neighbor. Tell them, it's still Friday. 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 Yeah, they're looking at your health bill. They're looking at what the doctors have said concerning your health. And they're saying, oh my goodness. And I thought this person really feared the Lord. I thought this person really loved the Lord. How come they come and have cancer now? What kind of thing is that? Just tell me, it's still Friday. It's still Friday. It's still Friday. Turn to somebody else. Tell them, it's still Friday. It's still Friday. 
Friday. It's still Friday. Give me a bit of time. Sunday morning, he's going to show up and up from the grave. He arose with a mighty triumph over his foes. He arose the arose a victor from the dark domain. If Jesus did it, and you have the spirit of Jesus, watch this space. Let me slap somebody a high five. Tell them watch this place. Watch this space. Watch this space. Watch this space. In fact, you are going to come looking for me some other time in the old place where you used to see me. And guess what? The tomb is going to be empty. You are going to come looking for me in the place of a broken marriage. I don't live there no more. I don't live there no more. You are going to come looking for me on Single Avenue. Excuse me. You didn't get the memo? I have moved. I'm now in married estate. You didn't tell you? Yeah, the devil is a liar. Watch. I am not in the tomb anymore. Help me slap somebody a high five. Tell them, I don't live there anymore. I don't live there anymore. Why do you seek the living amongst the dead? I don't live there anymore. I know you came to visit me in the hospital some time ago. And then you're thinking, I'll take some milk to him. I'll take some milk to him. Buy your meal, buy your milk. I'm sure you'll find someone to give when you get to the hospital. But as for me, I don't live there anymore. I no longer live. I no longer live on sickness avenue. Don't you understand? I am now in my, I am now in healthy crescent. That is where I live. I am no longer in the tomb. The angel said to them, Why are you looking for the living among the dead? I don't live there anymore. Help me tell your neighbor. I need them to know. Just in case they've been looking at you funny here and wondering how come this kind of thing happened to you. Just let them hold it a while. I don't live there anymore. Mm. I don't pot. I don't live there no more. Don't go. Looking for me in a place. Oh. There are some people who are still looking for you as the cult boy that they used to know. Mm. So you don't know the executioner? Mm. A roommate? Okay. Mm. Mm. I don't live there anymore. Yeah, there's a brother saying, tell them, pastor. <laughs> I'm now tongue-talking, devil-chasing, hell the populating When I wake up in the midnight, instead of entering bush, I enter the spirit. My language has changed. Instead of blending people, now I blend the devil. When I wake up at 12 a.m., it is Igabala Kategele Dezevere Data, Ekoroba Manakasa Barate, Elembro Gada. If you are looking for me there, I don't live there anymore. How do I know if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell in my mortal body? I am making an unusual recovery. I am no longer in the tomb. Why are you seeking the living amongst the dead? I know you know my spot near Casablanca. Mm -hmm. Just keep looking at me. Don't fidget too much. Otherwise people will suspect. Uh, just keep, keep a serious spiritual face. Uh, say, preach, pastor. Mm -hmm. I know you know where I used to stand. And I don't stand there anymore. Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? I know the other girl you saw has my figure. But that ain't me. I don't live there anymore. Uh, yes, yes, yes. You know where we used to go and... Uh, Ah, uh, yes. At the back of Oster. Okay, I will leave that alone. Uh, the devil is a liar. Why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? I don't live there anymore. One of the things the resurrection of Jesus taught us is that anybody can recover. Anybody can recover. If you knew the real story of the person sitting beside you, You'll change your seat right now. You'll say, excuse me, Osha. I think there is a mistake 
in this seating arrangement. My friends, as I consider the text in front of me, okay, uh, there is an interesting conversation uh, that Thomas, Didymus, uh, the one called the twin, is having with the rest of the disciples. This is interesting, my friends, because hmm, there are people like Thomas around all of us. Hear what Thomas said. One of the twelve wasn't present when Jesus appeared to them. It was Thomas whose nickname was the twin. All right. I could preach on the twin. Oh my goodness. I could preach on the twin. Because inside all of us is a twin. Let me ask your neighbor. Tell them, have you met my twin yet? Mm, you will understand in a minute. <laughs> ask your neighbor this side. Have you met my twin yet? Because inside every man is a twin. The same capacity a man has for good, he has for evil. Uh, the, the, that's why some people say, don't let me change that for you. <laughs> uh, because if I change that for you, it is not the Holy Ghost I'm talking guy that you know that is going to show up. It's not meets my twin. Uh, have you shocked yourself in anger before? You did something and you got so angry that you were walking. People could not believe that it is the same courteous, normal, jovial you and they're like what was that they just met your twin so it is understandable that thomas will be called the twin because when he followed jesus he followed loyally but still yet there was a part of him that didn't believe are you still here uh, stay with me <laughs> mm. thomas is who i call a silent skeptic or a silent non-believer because I'm looking at their journey and I'm thinking Jesus told you this was going to happen he told you that he was going to die in fact you were there when he rebuked Peter you said nothing um, you, you saw the miracles that he did and you said nothing um, you, you followed him around from city to city and you said nothing. You were following him for three and a half years. Still yet, you did not believe in him. For many of us, my friends, there are people who are around you. Oh, they love you. They just don't believe in you. They are like Thomas. Three years. Jesus talked about everything that was going to happen to him. And still, you did not believe him. Watch this. The next thing that we see. He was not in the room the first time. And he wasn't there the first time Jesus appeared to the rest of the disciples. Um, and he told them, no, 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 I'm not going to believe that. I'm not going to believe that until I see him. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, Jesus being Jesus. You know, I, 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 like, I, like, I like Jesus. Honestly, honestly, I, I like Jesus. I don't think I'll serve any other God if not Jesus. Do you, do you understand? Jesus. Jesus. I was at an event yesterday and a, an elderly man was speaking and he was talking about Jesus. And I, and I went to him and I, and I thought about it. And, and I thought about it and I thought about it. He said, the reason why I follow Jesus is because me, I like power. I'm not joking. So the reason why I follow Jesus that as a person, I like power. So, now the person will get power pass. I do follow. The day I find somebody that Jesus will bow to, I will start serving that person. But until then, I pin here. Uh. <laughs> so, Jesus being Jesus, they locked the door and Jesus appeared in the room. How many times have we done things that we think we can lock him out? There is a Yoruba adage that says that the talk that we said that daddy should not hear, usually it's daddy that has the solution. Uh, 
Uh, how many times have you tried to do something outside of Jesus? You know, you are, you are running the deal. You are running the deal. You, you know it's not totally clean like that, like that. You know that they, they get the way with the deal, they, you know. But, 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 but you didn't pray. You didn't involve Jesus in that. But you just went on with the deal. You are just doing the deal. When the FCC enter? So you say, Father, Father, Jesus, you answer when I call you. <laughs> is it today that your day broke? <laughs> what I'm trying to say to you is this. Doors can't keep him out. And too often in our life we do things thinking that he does not know what is going on. Are you still here? You can't lock him out. Walls can't shut him out. Ceilings can't keep him out. I tell people, one of the scariest things to me is the omnipresence of God. Do you know what the omnipresence of God means? God is everywhere. At every time. And his eyes never close. Ah! That is, he does not sleep. He does not slumber. He doesn't blink. God does not take a leave. He doesn't go on holiday. And his eyes are everywhere. Even when you close the door of room 216, he was... <laughs> he was there. When you sat with people to connive about the downfall of another brother, he was there. Even though he did it at 1 a.m. in the night. When you meet in clandestine hotel to plan the downfall of your boss, he was there. Walls don't keep him out. Help me tell your neighbor, walls don't keep him out. Walls don't keep him out. See, I don't have time. They are signaling to me. Help me tell your neighbor, you can make a recovery. You can make a recovery. I'll continue in second time. Oh, so they enter the room. This is so good. They enter inside the room. Jesus, they're in the room there. Jesus enters inside the room. And he ignores all the other disciples. Now there are 11 disciples remaining because Judas is gone. He ignores the 10 and goes straight. So Thomas, excuse me, please hold on a while. Does it not look at times that God does that? Ignore the ones that are serving faithfully and goes to answer the one that is doubting. No, no. Let's, let's, let's. Uh, have, you, have, you, have you not thought about it that every now and again, God has a penchant, a proclivity of leaving the people that are faithful and blessing the unjust. Many of us, many believers, we've had these questions in our mind. At times we are bold enough to ask it. At times we don't have the boldness to ask it. But at times it looks like God is unjust. Because it seems like he leaves the very faithful to go and answer the unfaithful. That at times in your pain when you are praying, you are saying, God, why? I know Cynthia. Father, I know Cynthia and I know you know Cynthia more than me. If from what I know of Cynthia, I will answer me first before I answer Cynthia. And you, you know more about Cynthia than me. Father, why? Have you ever been in the situation where you see the unrighteous prospering? Oh God, let me come where you live. <laughs> I've heard it said, it's a good girl, no they pay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I've heard it said that, that, that to be a good girl doesn't pay. I've heard it. I've, even Christians say such nonsense, but they say it. So doing things the right way doesn't, doesn't pay. Say, in this Nigeria, in this Nigeria, you must, you must know how you will work out your work out. <laughs> Hear me. I thought about it and I'm like, but why would Jesus ignore the ones who don't have doubt in their heart, who are faithful, ignore them in a room 
and go straight to meet the one who seemingly has doubt and who is unfaithful. And I thought about it and I thought about it. The host began to help me to understand that could it be that was Jesus' biggest compliment to the ones that he ignored. I said, what are you talking about? Because he knows that they can handle it. The way it was in my mind is this. One day, I asked my pastor. I was, I was telling him, oh, Papa, how come you don't come to Port Harcourt? How come you don't want to come to Port Harcourt? We will invite this one. Now. Something's always coming up. Yeah, but you go to all these other churches. Blah, 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 blah. Ah, blah, blah. He said to me one day, he said, Larry, my not coming to you is my biggest compliment to you. He said, Pops, I don't understand. Please break it down. And he said, because you don't need me for your growth. It means whatever is happening, you have enough to carry the weight. Is it possible that the reason it looks like God is not answering you in the immediate is because of what you put inside you? In other words, God believes more in you than you believe in yourself. He, he knows that the stuff you put inside you, you can handle the pressure. He knows the stuff you put inside you, you can handle the pain. He won't do like that with some other people because their pain threshold is very slow or very low. He knows you can handle the tomb. Somebody is under the sound of my voice and you're saying, God, why would you leave me in the tomb? Day one is over. It's a long time. He said, morning, he said, weeping and just for a night. And joy comes in the morning. But do you know that every now and again, it looks like we have extended nights. That you begin to ask yourself, God, my own day, no day break. Are you still here, my friend? And then you look at somebody, it looks like they went through night and they are out on the day. It's God's way of telling you, I put more inside you than the person you are envious of. Ooh, the threshold, the same power I put inside you. Don't you know that the, the longer your night tarries, uh, ooh, the more resilient you become. Uh, you are still the one I'm going to use to show the world. Uh, that people can go through fire and not smell of smoke. That people can go through water and their shirt is not wet. I have a different assignment for you. I don't know who you are, but if it looks like your night is extending more than is normal, it is not a time to be angry. It is not a time to start crying. It is a testament of what God put on the inside of you. It's simply his way of telling you, I believe in you more than you believe in yourself. When God wants to show the world that it's possible to be a young girl in today's Nigeria who is not doing wrongs, who is not sleeping around, and will money is cast to find for and still will not compromise because you're wondering, but God, I can easily find a man, oh. but God, I can easily do this, oh. but God, I can do what everybody else is doing, oh. but still yet, you are not doing it because of your commitment to him. And at times you are wondering, but God, why would you leave me and go and bless so and so is because of what he put inside you. You are tougher than you know. You are stronger than you know. It is a way of letting you know that what is inside you is heavy. What is inside you is heavy. My goodness. Famous. He ignores the ten and he goes to speak to Thomas. And he doesn't talk to Thomas much. Oh, I can preach this thing, oh Jesus. He, he doesn't talk to Thomas much. He just got to Thomas. Said, Thomas, this is my hand. Put your hand here. Fill the hole. This is my side. Put your hand there. And fill the hole. You know why? Because God understands that there are some people you don't talk to. You just show them. The people saying you will never succeed, don't talk back. Show them. People saying, we will see how long you will last. Don't talk too much. Show them. People saying you will never make a comeback. Don't talk too much. Show them. Help me slap somebody a high five. Tell them, keep watching me. 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 You think I will not recover? Watch this space. You think I can't build it back up? Watch this space. This is not the time for too much talking. I am part of the generation who is always trying to defend themselves. Enough is enough of trying to defend yourself. This is not talking time. It is showing time. It is time to manifest. It's time to show the power of God. You don't know whether Jesus is real? Look at me. You don't know whether 
God is real, take a good look at me. I am a walking, talking example to let you know that God is real and Jesus is real. And he can turn somebody's story alive. He can, talk, he can turn someone's story around. I told somebody, if you're ever confused, that God has the ability to bring a man from the back and bring him to the front. Take a very good look at me. I am the example that God can raise anybody. Your background irrespective. Your background regardless. You are thinking because you grew up in Bundu. Bundu my foot. Even if you grew up inside the water of the water side, God can still turn your story around. Do you hear me what I am saying? I am the house of God and for all your naysayers and all the people saying, we will see how far you will go. You don't have to talk back. Just show them. Who will marry you? Watch me get married. So, oh, they are calling all the animals that have horns. Even snail is showing up. You will soon know that I'm a rhinoceros. Watch this space. Because in some instances, you don't need to talk too much. You just need to show them. Some people are confused about the power of God in your life. You don't need to talk. Say, ah, God is real now. When I read my Bible, mm, just show them. This sign shall follow them that believe in my name. Show them. You want to see someone who can recover from a fall? Show them. You want to see someone bounce back from? You know, there's a place you are. When you have not hit rock bottom, the bottom is on top of you. Show them. Why? If the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell in your body, then you can make a recovery. I simply stopped by this morning to remind somebody in this room there is a recovery mandate over your life. Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Mm. Hallelujah. Lift your hands all over this place. Mm. Oh my God. How does a Jesus with a glorified body still carry scars? How does a God who's not no longer in the tomb still have scars? Number of my scars are the number of my victory. That's why my praise can never be the same as yours. Say, the number of my scars are the number of my victory. That's why That's my praise can never be the same as yours. So, excuse me if I get undignified. You don't know life. life. I know what he has done for me. You are no longer in the tomb. You are not in the place of your glory. But God will still allow you to have scars. Listen to me. He will still allow you to have scars. Because there will still be many Thomases that need your scars to come out of their own tomb. That's the reason why. He keeps scars. In, oh, seconds after I will tell you the use of scars. Scars are powerful. I've come out of the tomb, but I have the marks. They're a constant reminder of what I survived. Ooh. When I look at my son now, he has all these scars in his chest. And unwittingly, if he's talking to you and he forgets himself, he starts, each, he starts doing that. He starts doing that. And when he's talking to me, I really get almost upset and it, because it just feels like a bad habit. And one night I was thinking about it and God said, it's a constant reminder of what he survived. Ooh. Hear me? Your scars are not a negative. They're a positive. 
they keep you humble. They give you a praise point. So that every time you remember what you survived, when you want to complain, say, hey, come back, yeah, 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 yeah. And your spirit is lifted because you remember what you survived. I'm no longer in the tomb, but I have the scars as a constant reminder of what I survived to let me know that God brought me through that. Number two, reason for scars, it's a prophecy. Your scars are the prophecy of the next difficulty. So that every time he does like this and he's ever in problem or in trouble, he can remember the God that did this. Same God. Recovery mandate over. Put those hands together, celebrate the Lord. Lift your hands, Father, in the name of Jesus. Pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Who's in the tomb right now? Some of them feel ignored and abandoned in the tomb. Help them to understand that it's because you put more inside them and that they can make total recovery. Someone is saying, why the scars? Father, help them to see that their scars are reminders of the things you brought them through and that their scars is a prophecy against any future issues that may arise. That the same God who brought them through this one will bring them through whatever the devil throws at them. Father, strengthen the faith of these your people even in these times. Cause their resolve in you to become stronger. Cause their depth in you to be deeper. Father, no matter the difficulty that we face in this season, help them to know that if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead dwell in our body, there is nothing we cannot overcome. These are our simple prayer and petition. In Jesus' matchless name, and everybody shout a big amen. amen. Clap your hands, oh ye people. You may please be seated. Glory to God. When I was away, Pastor Eno, and the rest of these pastors are the ones that are putting me under pressure. Um, a few quick um, announcements. Don't forget, tonight, Jesus Festival, 4 p.m., same place, same auditorium, inside, outside, it's going to be a Jesus Holy Ghost party. All right, and you don't want to miss it. I got good news. I got good news. Next week, Saturday. Oh, ooh, that is a clash there. I have to revisit this. I don't want the two to clash. Um, I had planned that next week, Saturday, we were going to have Spirit Gym. You know what Spirit Gym is? Okay. If you're not clapping, it means you don't know what Spirit Gym is. All right. Spirit Gym is what people call prayer stretches, um, but we just come together and we'll pray. Six hours at a stretch. From 6 a.m. to 12 p.m., blasting in tongues, building up ourselves on our most holy faith. So that like an edifice we rise. Do you understand? Um, but I, I see that it is clashing with the um, men's prostate screening. Um, so I will announce a further date for that. So next week, Saturday, um, it is the Army of David um, prostate screening. All right. Army of David prostate screening for next week, Saturday. So if you're a man um, over 40, um, you want to be in there. Like they have announced... Um, First come, first serve. The first 50 people um, will be tested for free. Glory to God. All right. All right. Uh, I wanted to announce in tents, um, but because of the shift in the date for Spirit Gym, um, I'm going to hold on to that. Glory to God. Were you blessed in church today? Oh, come on, help me here. Were you blessed in church today? Why don't you put those hands together and just celebrate the Lord? Hallelujah. Glory to God.
Very quickly, I'm going to ask, as we bring the service to a close, if this is your very first time in House in the Rock, Port Harcourt, could you please kindly stand? If this is your very first time in House in the Rock, Port Harcourt, could you please kindly stand? Church, please put your hand together for them. Oh, you can do better than that if someone is standing around you. Put those, wow. If you're sitting around them, extend to them a warm hand of Christian salutation. Make them feel very warm and very welcome in the house of God. Those of you standing, thank you very much for choosing our church this Sunday morning. I want to believe we have said something and done something that's been a blessing to you. I want you to know that in this church, when you become a part of the pastor of this church, three things will happen for you. Number one, your faith in God is going to grow. Your faith in God is going to be deepened. It's going to become more robust. You're going to be firmly rooted in the Lord. That is the first thing that will happen for you. The second thing that will happen is that you will find a passionate Jesus crazy people to fellowship with. In this house, we have no apologies about how intense our worship is or how intense our praise is. We love Jesus passionately and we are not afraid or ashamed to show it. So if you are like us, you will find great company here. We are crazy about Jesus. And the third thing that will happen to you is look around. Look around. There are a lot of lovely people around in this house and you can make a lifelong friend here. By being nice, by smiling, some have met their spouses. All right. So, so in this house, you can make a lifelong friend. Again, thank you very much for choosing our church. Um, we have come to the end of our first service. We'd like to honor you by asking that you exit the hall before the rest of God's people. If you look to my right, um, the ushers are standing. The configuration of the hall is a little different, so the ushers are going to help me. Um, to my right, there are two lovely ladies. They are waving their hands at you. Um, please kindly take your bags, your Bibles, and all the things you came to church with and walk majestically towards them as they usher you to a nice little reception that we have prepared for you. Church, please put your hand together for them as they exit the auditorium. <laughs> Glory to God. The rest of us, bow your heads. Reach out, grab someone's hand as we share the benediction. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Send you help out of Zion and answer all your petitions in Jesus name Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you now and forevermore. Amen Grab someone's hand, squeeze that hand and say surely goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life and you are the house of the Lord forever and ever Amen. God bless you second service starts now Welcome, second service. We are praying in the Holy Ghost. I love you.